Please, I'd like you to stand for a few minutes. Father, we thank you. You are also called the governor of the nations, the ruler of the earth, the owner of our lives. Kabiesi, thank you. Kabiesi, thank you. Our Father, we glorify your name. For your mercy has covered us as your people. Thank glory, Father, today. In Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 61, and I want to read the first four verses. Isaiah chapter 61, in the King James translation, and we'll read the first four verses. Amen. All right. It says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because, so it's telling you why the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, because he had anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison doors to those who are bound. Wow. Wow. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, <laughs> glory, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, all who mourn, verse 3, keep it coming, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, this is the key here, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Verse 4. Verse 4, one more. And they shall, this is what happens when we enter into the dimensions just mentioned, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. And they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities. I thought I would hear a better amen. Amen. And the desolation of many generations. Father, give us a word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The key to successful living as a believer and to operate in the fullness of sufficiency is to understand what God intends before he does them. I, I find this strange because um, every time I posture myself in scripture, I begin to realize more and more that God is not going to do anything else for us. He's done everything. Oh, I thought I'd hear an amen there. Amen. Everything. Somebody say everything. everything. He's done everything for us. Apostle Paul, one of the most interesting writers of scripture, shows us through his letters that we must understand the theologies behind the instruction God gives. If you look at the Pauline epistles, you would Notice how he wrote. He would say certain things, then he would now admonish, men love your wives. And he would admonish after he had given you the mind of God. In other words, we must know what is the concept behind the things that we do before we practice it. The challenge of the church, therefore, is a lack of understanding 
what God has in mind. We think we understand it, but we really don't. And then if you have this understanding, you will clearly follow the guidance. And whenever you then hit an obstacle, because the obstacle is part of the design. You know, it's part of the design. It never, it never made sense to me so until you read scriptures like there was war in heaven. So even in heaven there was war. Ah, I thought that was the place of perfection. <laughs> but there was war. So obstacles are part of the journey. The fact that you're going through a challenge is not indicative that God is not with you. They lied to us. They lied to us that if you have challenges and problems, then maybe you are far from God. In fact, it is proof that God is close. In fact, if you read the writings of David, he will get to one point. He said, until your heart is overwhelmed, it won't lead you to the rock. <laughs> So the obstacles are part of it. Don't be afraid of them. In fact, can, can, let me boast a little bit. When the obstacle hits you, that is your opportunity to show your godness. So I go looking for trouble. I'm a troublemaker. So I look for trouble where there is no trouble. So I can, I can show some God. I want to throw God's weight around. I'm God's joker. Glory <laughs> to God. You know, trouble comes and he says, have you seen my son, Ike? And I'm all hurrying up. That's why Nigerians are blessed. Man. If you're Nigerian here, again, say, hey, hey. God. <laughs> if you go anywhere in the world and there are no Nigerians, they run from that place. Run. There are three kinds of human beings in the world. There is black, there is white, and there are Nigerians. And so, in that realization, I then get to the point where I have to then say to myself that, you know, you know, oh, please help me, Lord. Help me get this thing out of my spirit. Anytime I fly to the country of Nigeria, you get to the airport, you see our brothers and sisters who have come from the diaspora. They act as if there is no traffic here. They act as if there are no smelly toilets here. They act as if there is no traffic. Traffic on A635? On A Relax, man. So I get to the airport and some people are misbehaving somehow. This country, there is no light. Quiet. The reason why the believer cannot address matters that way is that we are only on earth. We are not off the earth. So I come from a different government. And the government that I come from, my God supplies. How many needs? That's why his name is called Jehovah Jireh. The word Jehovah Jireh does not mean God my provider. In the original Hebrew tongue, the word Jireh means the one who meets the need before your need came. So there was those provisions. That's why it doesn't matter where I go to. There is always a house to live in. Jesus showed the prototype. He said foxes have nets and bed, uh, birds have nets and foxes have holes. But the son of man has no place to lay. He said what he was trying to show you is that anywhere I need to sleep, I will. I will. You've got to understand that you're not here to make dollars. You're here to enforce the kingdom of God. And that's why the Bible says, occupy till I come. The word occupy is a military term. It is an occupying force. When, uh, when Barack Obama conquered Afghanistan and then they, to sustain the order, they put in an occupying force so that there will be no resurgence. The moment Biden took them out, the Afghanistan came back again. We are the ones that are the occupying force on the earth to insist, Satan, you will go no further. Ah. We can't be begging for the things that we are masters over. Glory to God. I'm not looking for money. I am money. I don't think you are ready for me here. <laughs> I, I, I am not looking for wealth. I am wealth. In fact, look at the person by his side. Tell the person, shake my hand now that you have the opportunity. Because after this service, you may need a secretary to have power. Glory to God. Can I preach like I feel it already? There are people in this building. Your best days are about to begin today. Your amen is finding my trouble. I said your best days is about... Ah!
glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Your days of rising is starting today. Where they said there is no way you will make a way. I don't know who I'm talking to. The anointing of a barrier breaker. Ah! We shall break barriers in this city. Get ready. I said get ready. I said get ready. Go and look for somebody by your side. Tell them get ready. House on the rock is about to take over. I said we're about to take over. I said we're about to take over. The mandate is upon us. The goodness of God shall be revealed. Shall be revealed. Let, 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 let me explain it this way. I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I didn't mean to get excited. Please forgive me. I, I just, I'm just cool. The gospel of God is the power of God. The reason why there is a flaunting of wealth to the believer, I, 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 and I need you to follow me. I, I do mean to just excite you. When you see a Lebron James who plays a bag of wind and throws it in the basket, and yet they say they pay him 200 million, 500 million. That's like, when are you going to walk? Because what you don't recognize as the believer is when you see him, is a picture of what you should be twice off. You must follow me. Twice off. So the challenge is this. The challenge is the heart. It's not the passion. It's the heart. There were three feasts in old Israel or if you want to call it conventions. There were three conventions in Ozri. You know, and in those conventions, everybody had to leave whatever they were doing to come to Jerusalem. You know, our mother was saying this morning, and she said it again in this service, when she was saying, please, the conference starts on Wednesday. When are we going to stop pleading with people to come? They, they don't understand that this is Zion. <laughs> I don't know who sang it, whether it was Sonia, I don't know who sang it. Because if you understood it, these doors, you'll be begging for it to be open to come to Zion. Where there's innumerable company of angels. Where just men are made perfect. But you don't understand it. So we have reduced the church, and with all due respect, there's nothing wrong in our services being quick. But there's nothing, where are we, where are we in a hurry to? I, I used to think like that. When I was pastoring in South Africa, my services were one hour, 30 minutes. Then one day I read the scripture and I was afraid. When Moses left the presence of God, Joshua stayed there. It was when he stayed there that he got the command that when Moses is gone, you will take over. Why are we too much in a hurry? Bola no. Where? So in these three conventions, the first one is called the Feast of the Passover. This happened in the first quarter of the year. In the Feast of the Passover, just follow me carefully. I, I know my time. If I go through my notes, I struggle, but just follow me. In the Feast of the Passover... This was when the children of Israel, when God had now seen that, okay, it was time. It was time. Remember, they were there 400 years, and another 30 years was added. So in the feast of the Passover, they had to kill a lamb to put the blood of the lamb on the lintel of the door. This is interesting because we don't see it as you read the scripture, that even though they were slaves, yet they were wealthy. How do we know? Lambs were the exclusive of kings. You couldn't afford lambs as an ordinary citizen of Egypt. So they had money, yet they were slaves. <sighs> so when they killed the lamb, they put the lintel on the door. 
this God we serve is an amazing God. Did you know that it was a prophetic calendar that the day Jesus died for you and I was on the exact day, exact moment that they put the lamb on the lintel of the door. It was an orchestration of God, sir. This, oh man, you are, you are born into this season for a reason. You did not come a hundred years ago. The reason why you came now, God had arranged it in his, in his computer that a time will come house on the rock, Grand Perry, will exist in a corner of Texas to fulfill the mandate of God. The Passover. So when they came to the feast of the Passover, it was a recognition. You, you know why it's important for you to recognize when God is in operation? Because you can't learn God. God can't be learned. God has to be revealed. Our minds is too minute to understand or comprehend God. And that is why one of the reasons why the things that we teach doesn't look as if it affects the members is that it's not the teaching that will change your life. It's the application of what you are taught. A non-application of that thought, you remain a, a member. You are just there warming the seats. Pharaoh had this prenomination. He, he, he stood outside one day in his balcony in Egypt and he looked at the slaves. He was not, he just couldn't figure out what is it that was making him uncomfortable. Then one day he called his senators together and told them, he said, we must deal with these people. If we don't deal with them, they will soon join to another country and then they will take over. They were slaves. Why was he afraid of slaves? He was seeing something that the slaves themselves didn't see. Then one day Moses came and Moses said to him, Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve God. Pharaoh called the senators and said, I told you, that thing that he was calling another country was actually God. He didn't have the capacity to understand what it was. So what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh said, the only way we can stop them is to take time from them. He said, go and tell them. He said, they will still make bricks, but we won't give them raw materials. And the bricks had to be delivered the same time, the same place, the same quantity, without raw materials. They had to get that raw materials from a supernatural standpoint, sir. Ah, the raw materials to create what did not exist. For faith caused those things that be not. And they built those things. They were afraid of them. But Moses saw it. So when we get redemption, the second feast or convocation that they had not to get to was called the Feast of Weeks. In the Feast of Weeks, it was also known as the Pentecost. The Feast of Pentecost, as we know it, is when we are, there is the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So what they did at that time with the Feast of Weeks was that they brought in their labor. When they brought in their labor, then they got a blessing from God. Part of it is the tithe. Listen, let me settle it here. They say tithe is Old Testament. Whether it is old or new or in between, tithe. I can't explain what it is because it's not my teaching. But tithing is not one-tenth, it's the tenth. The reason why it is called the tenth is the old Hebrew word yakri is because it's the place of dominion. On your ten toes are ten governments to tramp <laughs> for another day. So they would bring their labor, their first fruits, their tithes, their offerings, they brought it to God. When they then brought it to God, towards the end of the year, they came to the last convocation, which was called the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Harvest, was precipitated on the spirit of joy. In other words, there was something that had to be released that would bring them into a place of abundance. It wasn't the works of their hands, which was in the Feast of Weeks, but when they gathered in the Feast of Harvest, which was also known as the Feast of the Ingathering, it was precipitated. So they had to enter into a place of ecstatic joy. Joy is not what you do when you are happy. For example, if somebody buys me an iPhone 14 
And then I get excited and I say, thank God, this phone becomes an idol. Why? Because I would have not had the reason to say thank God if I didn't have this phone. So that's what is called happiness. Happiness is not the function of the believer. The function of the believer is joy. Joy is from within. So that when you are looking on the outside and there is nothing happening, joy tells you relax. There is no food in the fridge, joy tells you relax. You're able to bring it forth from inside. That's why the Bible says in Jonah 2 and verse 8, they that observe lying vanities. What are lying vanities? The things on the outside that is suggesting that God is not at work. It's not that God is not at work. That's why Isaiah said, Isaiah wrote somewhere, he said, why have thou forsaken me? It's not that God forsakes, it's that you cannot see the Shekinah glory. That manifested presence that comes, and I want to show you how you're going to get more money than LeBron James. That manifested presence comes as a result of the spirit of joy, which comes as a result of praise. If you don't understand what I'm saying, go and ask Jehoshaphat, how does two tribes fight five nations? When they saw they had no capacity to fight them, he said, I point unto them singers. Ah! When they appointed singers, they began to sing. Whilst they were singing, what were they singing? The Lord is good and his mercy. When you start invoking God's mercy, he takes over. The Bible says he sent confusion in their midst. Please, sir, what kind of word did they come with when they came with their deeds of property, their gold, their silver, their Lexus, their land? What kind of war was that? That the Bible says after they killed each other, it took the Israelites three days. I came to prophesy. You are about to press God to a dimension. It will take you three days to God. Three days, sir. Maybe you don't understand what it is. Three days. <laughs> they will go to the camp. Carry. That's how I know those guys were Nigerians. It's only Nigerians that put gold in the car, put in the pocket, put in the bag, put under the shoe, put on their children. And they were gathering for three days. A dimension. Look at it. Let me show you so that you understand. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 22. Put it up. Come on, guys. Everybody look at it. One, two, go. Read. Stop. Read one more time. Stop. Read one more time. Stop. Read one more time. When do you do it? He said, now when they began to do what? And to do what? This is the kingdom strategy to wealth. I will show you. A friend of mine in the country of Nigeria, his name is Pastor Kwaju Yemade, Pastor of Covenant Nation. He had an opportunity to interview our father, Daddy Gio. 30 minutes interview. One of the questions we asked him was, Sir, tell us what kind of prayers you prayed. Show us your children that has made Redeemed Church be in 193 countries of the earth. And over 12 million registered members at that time. He's jealous. The old man sat, the interview is on YouTube. You can go Google it. The old man sat on his chair and then he laughed. The old man said, 95% of my prayers is thanksgiving. Ah. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 60, because I want us to dance. You dance like crazy here. Uh, uh, let me prove it to you. Isaiah chapter 60. Let's read from verse 9. Let's read from verse 9. Watch this. King James. Give me the King James translation. Not New King James. Give me King James, please. Don't, don't be angry. It says, surely the island shall wait for me. And the ships of Tash is first. To do what? To bring thy sons from far. Their silver and their gold with them. Unto the name of the Lord thy God. And to the Holy One of Israel. Because he had glorified it. Verse 10. Come on, guys, 10. And the sons of strangers. Please watch the progression here. Just watch it. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Verse 11. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 11. See the key here. It then says, this is how you access the world that Libram James can't access. It said, therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Why? That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and their kings may be brought. So watch this. So from this scripture, do you agree that if we find out what the gates are, 
then you have access to what the kings would bring in. Because the point here now is to find out what are those gates that I need to open continually. The answer is in verse 18. It says, watch this. Violence shall no longer be had in thy land, wasting not destruction within thy borders, and thou shalt call thy wall salvation. And thy gates, what? Praise is what you do. Listen, when you are in trouble, the first thing is not to pray. The first thing is go open your, because if your gates is locked and somebody is bringing your parcel, then they can't access your house. To open your gates, enter into a place of praise. Ah, you will praise God. Listen, let me, let me close here. Let me close. So, years back, I used to live in London, England. And so we used to live in an apartment at that time in a place called Enfield. So I and my wife were going to a wedding. And then um, I was to preach at that wedding. And also there was a design to do chairman. I was also chairman of the wedding. And, and so I told my wife the day before, you know, our mothers, our women, they, they are not slow. They, I don't know what word to use. They just they take their time. So my wife has started preparing the dress for the wedding from Friday. For the wedding on Saturday. I don't know, maybe your, your wives are different, but mine is just, you know. So I had learned to live web like that. So she, she brought her some dresses and then she would tell me, um, babe, do you like this dress? I would say yes. You say you're lying. <laughs> because she would say you don't want me to test the other dress. I said, so why are you asking me? Ha! This life. So the wedding was for 12 o'clock. The wedding was for 12 o'clock. By 11.30, we were not ready. So, and that's how we used to live in our apartment. I'd already gone to remove the rent for the place where I was living to pay in England. And I used to pay at the post office at that time, and they were going to close by 12. So now that she was there, you can't complain. You know, the money was in my pocket. And then um, by the time she was ready, it was too late. So I said to myself, it's okay. I'll pay it on Monday, since it was weekend anyway. So we got to the wedding. After I finished preaching, the guy that was now singing, the guy that was in charge of the wedding, the guy now started singing. He started playing his guitar. He played the guitar and then came to where I was. I came Bobo. I came Bobo. I came Big Boy. He sang and sang as he was singing. I don't know when I stood up. He sang to the point, Orimi Wu, Orimi Skata, Orimi Lagogo. I, I stood up. As he saw that I stood up, watch this, watch this. This is the principle here. As he saw that I stood up, he increased the velocity of his singing. As he increased the velocity of his singing, my hand went into my pocket where my rent was. As he saw that my hand entered into my pocket, he increased the velocity of his singing. When he increased it, I brought out my hand and I started spraying him my rent. Ladies and gentlemen, when you praise God, let God arise. And all your enemies. Praise God. He praised me. And I gave him what I did not have. There is a dimension you enter. When you praise God, the Bible says, let the people praise thee. Let the people praise thee, O God. And it said, the earth shall yield her increase. And God, even our God. Ocean Ocean Oneo, Ocean Bakuba, Ocean Wajo. Well, sometimes you are, you are going through things, you don't understand how the food is going to come. You tell your wife, relax. I know the antidote. And at midnight, Paul and Silas. They were still in stocks. They began to praise. <laughs> and an echo. You're not hearing me. Emi Omo, Emi Omo. Oh, go, go. Oh, go, go. Emi Tima. Sometimes it's not in the length. One time they said my son was ill. The only time he was sick. My first son is 24, 23. First time. I went to preach. I came back. They put all tubes on him. I went to that boy. And I sang. 
for I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and the rider praise is not what we do to make people come before the message in fact a day is coming sir that when you give a preacher one hour to preach you must give praise and worship one hour because the word is for you it's not for God when you see the old fathers rolling on the floor don't be cute with your suit one more quarter more there is a covenant they know sir it is the same covenant David understood he said one thing am I desired of the Lord he said that will I seek after please sir how do you explain a man who killed another man took his wife got her pregnant yet God said he's a man after my heart God used to miss David God missed David so that when they were writing the story of his legacy they would say Jesus thou son one time <laughs> oh glory <laughs> Paul wrote sir Paul wrote he said in Ephesians 5 he said do not be drunk with wine wherein it's excess he said, in, in fact, in verse 7, he said, redeeming the time. The word redeeming is an economic word to be to buy back time. How do you buy back time? He said, do not be drunk with wine where it's excess, but be filled with the Spirit. How? Singing to yourself. It, these things are spiritual strategies, sir. It's not for us to be dancing. Singing to yourself in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart. In other words, when he said, do not be drunk with wine, this was what he was saying. He was saying that if you want to know somebody who is filled with the spirit, look at a drunkard. That's what he was saying there. He said, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. So if you want to know somebody that is, he said, look at a the drunkard. There are three distinct characteristics of a drunkard. Number one, a drunkard is singing. Number two, a drunkard is dancing. He go meji meji. Number three, a drunkard is laughing. And the Bible says, he that seated in the heaven shall do what? He was not talking about God there, he was talking about you. How do I know? Paul said, for we are seated with him. You will dance, oh. Did you learn anything here today? I am showing you the dimension to access wealth in God. One time, I pray God, get ready to put up that scripture I want on the screen. Just give me a minute. You put it up now. One time I was very, I was going to go preach in a city. I think I was going to Atlanta from London. And then I didn't have enough money. All the money I had was to buy my ticket. And I don't know, ma. I don't know what's wrong with some airlines, you know. When they see your name, I don't know if the computer twists. Because when I buy my ticket, every time I buy my ticket, my seat is always number 67D. At the back of the plane you know the problem with being at the back of the plane is that by the time they get to your seat chicken and beef is finished how can you give a man like me vegetable pasta huh? how does that work so watch this watch this so every time I was going to go somewhere I will enter into a dimension of praising God days before as I'm climbing up into the aircraft remember all the other seats are here and first class on that side and the lady check I said the lady will say, oh, you're sitting on this. I said, but why can't I sit here? I would love to sit there. The person would smile. Then one day came. If you don't have strength to pray, you to pray praise and worship one hour in your home, God will enter, sir. I know what I'm telling you. So on this, on one occasion, they moved me from, from economy to premium economy. You want to know the difference between economy and premium economy? It's a cutting. Just a cutting. Because I did. <laughs> so here am I sitting down on the aisle seat of that premium economy. I'm praising God. There were people were boarding. So one guy passes by and then he stops. He looks at me, he stops. He says, Umfundisi. Umfundisi is the Zulu word for a pastor because I pastored in South Africa for 10 years. It's Zulu. So he knelt and he said, Pastor, I've been to your church. I had some principles in God's word and God has blessed me. I've not had time to come back and say thank you. I'm glad I met you here. Then he knelt down there 
and said, just say something to me. Because when an aircraft now, my English nature came out, that, not my rubber nature. So I put my hand on his chest and I said, God bless you. And he put his hand in his pocket and then brought out some money and he gave me. Remember, I had no money on that trip. Only the money for the flight. He put it in the pocket. And the Bible says, Moses turned to see this great sight. So me too, I turned on the chair to count what was there. It was $2,000. What? Just like that. While I was counting and I was like expressing what just happened. There was a guy behind me. was an Arab guy with long beard. He tapped me and said, who are you? The moment he said, who are you? Ah, my Ojota nature came. I said, ah, what is it? Just in case he was planning anything. Ah, so that we know there's the summer here. The guy tapped me and said, who are you? And then he came out of his chair. And now now where the guy now the people were still boarding. He said, whatever you told that guy, tell me. I put my hand on his chest and I said, God bless you. He went back to his chair. Three seconds later, he takes an envelope. He puts it in my hand. This time I did not wait to turn. I went into the toilet to pretend as if I needed to use the bathroom. I opened the envelope and counted. Another $2,000. $4,000 in five minutes. Just because you were praising God. of the scripture. Amos chapter 9. Watch this. Everybody read. Want to go. Read it out loud. Want to go. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim. One thing. Fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings like wine pouring out of the mountains. Put up verse 14. Put it up. Put it up. Verse 14. Keep reading. Everybody wants to go. And I will make everything right again for my people. Our CCG house on the rock. They will rebuild their ruined cities. They will plant vineyards and drink good wine. They will walk their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. Verse 15. The last one. Come on. Last one. Want to go read? And I will plant them and plant them on their own land. They will never again be uprooted from the land I have given them. God, your God. In Psalm 126, it said, when the Lord turned around the gate of captivity, they were them like dream. Then he filled their tongue with laughter and their mouth with singing. Then said they amongst the hidden, the Lord has done great things. This week, by an apostolic mandate, except if God did not send me, this week, your mouth will say great things. Upon this altar, are the anointings of our fathers. Our father, Pastor E. Adewe. <laughs> our father, Pastor Oje Kuye. There is a mantle here, sir. A fratacariados. You will praise God. I said you are coming with your own testimony. Then in that Psalm 126, it says, And they that sow in tears. He said they shall reap in joy. And he said they shall doubtless again bring their shoes rich. Go Sagbara to the beat. Go Sagbara to the beat. Go Sagbara. explain the prophetic significance of this service that a 90 year old man can be standing strong when they announced it I told myself it's, it's good I came here because I can't die are you ready to praise him you will take out an offering you will bring your sheep please dance I'm begging you I'm not saying that because I, I, you need to that these are symbols of the spirit I needed to give us a song that there is no malaria 
Are we ready to dance here in this place? Take out your offerings, whatever. And as you come, as you touch the altar, begin to thank you for the miracles that you're about to see in your lives. In the name of Jesus. Were you blessed today? Thank you so very much. Thank you, Pastor OJ. Thank you, House on the Rock. Let's praise God like we've never done before. Come on. Come on, let's rise on our feet and give God praise. Father, we love you, Jesus. We say, what are you turning into wine? 